At 2020 Optometric, your vision is their focus. Whether you're 5 or 65, Dr. Thomas Casagrande will get to know you, your lifestyle, and vision needs to ensure that your contacts or eyeglasses are a perfect fit and the right prescription every time. With the Valley's largest selection of eyewear, 2020 has over 2,000 frames, including top designer brands like Coach, Tiffany, Prada, Ray-Ban, Oakley, and more. Eye exams start as low as $89, so call or stop by to schedule your appointment today. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this day. Today it's on the air, off the presses, talking to a man that's been in television broadcasting for the better part of 50 years. That's exactly right. He is our guest today, a first-time guest. We'll walk down memory lane with this man that you may recognize. 436 Me TV Option 11. Today's program sponsored by Dr. Thomas Casagrande. And back here on the program on a Monday morning, it is on the air off the presses. Can't wait to get to our guest today. He's been in broadcasting a long time and uh, first time guest. And he also, by the way, is still working. He's not retired. So we'll get into that during the course of the show here. And, uh, you know, a couple of programming notes uh, tomorrow. We have uh, Sam Shima coming in from Gymnastics Beat. Now, here's a business that's been around for a long time. And guess what? His gym is now being ousted by high speed rail. How do you like that? So we'll talk to him about that and much more tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, we get more into a political theme again with Clint Olivier uh, here. He's gonna be here on the same day that he is having a debate with his foe, Joaquin Arambula. That's for District 31 in that state assembly race. So he'll be here um, on Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, still working on some of those uh, programs there. Anyway, you're watching us live on Comcast Channel 375. Xfinity and Comcast Cable has been our partner for a while now, in fact, since the very beginning. But if you don't have Comcast Cable, it's not a problem. Uh, you can watch us 43.6 uh, uh, and 13.1 over the air with a digital antenna you can purchase right here at Ventura TV. Now, if you can't watch this program in its entirety, uh, let's say 15, 20, 30 minutes, you can catch the rebroadcast of this program at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, 13.6 YouTube, 8 o'clock tonight on 4.6 Biz TV, and then the YouTube channel is 24 hours a day. A very interesting program we had on Friday, by the way, with Peter Nazaridian talking about anger management. At some point, maybe we might replay that particular program because... Um, you may have noticed it was taken off of our YouTube channel. Won't get into that, but at some point, it was such an interesting and popular program, and uh, Peter liked it too, a very popular topic, anger management. At some point, we'll probably try to replay that if we can. Anyway, my guest today, as mentioned here on the program, has been in television broadcasting for 50 years plus, and he is still a busy man. No signs of retirement in the near future for this guy, my friends. His resume, a very impressive one. He started out as a production man manager, then a public service director and a creative services director over at Channel 47. That's right, that was many moons ago. And back in the 1970s, he started his own production company. And along with a guy named Gary Bentley, he started a show called Video Sneak Previews. And here's a sneak peek of that. Well, it's, it's great to get all set up with video gear, tripod, light, extra tapes, batteries, and not to mention the camera itself. But getting all this stuff from place to place, that can be a problem. I bet you never thought there was so much to look for in just a camera case. They make life a lot easier. I've found that when you get this organized, not only is your equipment protected, but you're less likely to leave something behind. Are you ready for the top 20 movie rentals on video? That's coming up next. All right, you might recognize him, Gary Hansen. That's right. And at Channel 47, he became John Wallace's television news producer, and he occasionally appeared on camera. 
with, um, you know, many of us uh, in the news business call these things stand-up closes at the end of a story. Check it out. Gary Hansen. In the Fresno area, there are three children who won a cooking contest to get to California. 20 million Japanese viewers watched them win out of 30 finalists. Out of the 30,000 entrants, these two girls, 8 and 11, and this 11-year-old boy won. Their escort, Toshio Hanya, spoke with the news about the importance of the raisin in Japan. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Japan is the uh, largest uh, single uh, market uh, importer of California raisin. Uh, annual demand for California raisin approximately uh, in between uh, 18,000 to 20,000 tons. As a matter of fact, uh, three years ago, uh, we implemented the movement of California fruits into Japan uh, on record high. At that time, uh, 22,000 tons of California raisin was sold to Japan. Ask if California is what they expected. California uh, Fresno uh -huh. I am enjoying very much, and uh, I am surprised and impressed with the uh, you know, immensity of land. And so from here, the tour continues to go to the Tenneco West plant. Tonight at dinner, tomorrow they see how Americans bake. Sunday, they go to Yosemite National Park, over to the Sunmade Raisin Plant, back to L.A., and back to Japan. This is Gary Hansen, somewhere out in a vineyard near Fresno, for the news. Man, was that for my old station? KMPH Fox 26? I think so. Back in the day, shot on film, live in our studio is Gary Hansen. You may recognize him from the good old days, my friends. And yes, television, it was the good old days. Currently, he owns a low-power television station in Chico and Redding, KRHT, Channel 58. Well, actually, now it's a new channel. It's called Channel 41. The old channel, it was 58. He is also the video operations manager for the Fresno Grizzlies. So he is still active, still working, owns his own station, and he is still involved in booking his band. 436, Me TV, Option 11. We'll talk about the good old days of TV, and we'll talk about the one and only Bob Hope and his relationship or well close to a relationship with Bob Hope as you can get I guess uh, back in the day 436 me TV option 11 Thomas Casagrande 2020 optometrics is our sponsor today back in just a moment at 2020 Optometric, your vision is their focus. Whether you're 5 or 65, Dr. Thomas Casagrande will get to know you, your lifestyle, and vision needs to ensure that your contacts or eyeglasses are a perfect fit and the right prescription every time. With the Valley's largest selection of eyewear, 2020 has over 2,000 frames, including top designer brands like Coach, Tiffany, Prada, Ray-Ban, Oakley, and more. Eye exams start as low as $89, so call or stop by to schedule your appointment today. You already know Ventura TV Video and Appliance Center as the place where you can get the lowest prices on the latest quality brand appliances and electronics. But did you know that Ventura TV has one of the largest selections of camcorder accessories in the valley? Here's Mark Sheeran with more. Thanks, Gary. Ventura TV has got all the accessories you need to make great home videos, and we've got special prices for home shoppers. What about lighting? A lot of people don't realize you need good lighting for good pictures. Absolutely. We've got Solidex's cordless video light. Tremendous value. It comes with a charger. It comes with a battery, a rechargeable battery. Home shopper price, $45. High impact polystyrene cases not only work great for camcorders, but are great for laptop computers, portable fax machines, cellular phones, and a lot of other equipment. And you can customize the dice foam interior to fit your equipment exactly. The small cases, which are regularly $99.95, are priced at $35 for home shoppers. And the large cases, which are great for full-size VHS, which are normally $129, are home shopper priced at $40. Mark, what about tripods? We've got a great selection of tripods, but we've got a fantastic home shopper special. This tripod with all metal construction, metal crankhead, and fluid effect head, normally $59.95, is priced specially for home shoppers at $36.50. Mark, do you have a big selection of batteries? Gary, we've got over 40 different batteries for all the major brands of camcorders. And our best-selling model is this model that fits Sony camcorders. It's normally $34.95. The home shopper special is only $27.50.
Get the lowest prices in Fresno on the latest quality brand appliances, electronics, and accessories at Ventura TV Video and Appliance Center, 3619 East Ventura, on Ventura between First and Cedar. Or just call us at 266-5318 and we can UPS your order to you within 48 hours. Wow, who is that man on the screen just now? Was that Mark Sheeran with dark hair and a dark beard? Oh my gosh, have the years gone by. That was back in 1991, a video uh, production that was shot right here inside Ventura TV with all of those electronics. Remember the video cameras and the ca uh, camcorders and the VCR machines and all that. Gary Hansen is my guest today, and you were part of that production. That's right. Welcome to the program, by Thank the you. way. It's good to see you. My you know, so many shows you've done, and I just feel... Um, great pleasure in the fact that you're including me with all your great guests. You know? <laughs> <laughs> We've had a lot of them come through here uh, and I'm, I'm pleased that you're here. You, you have quite a history in television broadcasting but mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that commercial that you shot right here at Ventura TV back in 1991. I want to hear about that. Well, uh, Gary Bentley, uh, my partner, uh, we were working at Channel 47 together in, in news and he wanted to start a production company and uh, which we did. He started the Home Channel movies with the video, rent, video rental stores all around Fresno. And so we had the production on the side. So along with uh, uh, Gary Bentley and uh, Maynard Williams, we started a production company where we did all the original music, the writing and the shooting. This particular spot I directed and edited. So. Mm -hmm. uh, quarter of a century ago. So was this a commercial that was airing or what What was yes. that? It um, was a, a two minute commercial? Right, and, and we actually had some five minute commercials back then too. This was on Gary Cocola's home shopping club station. But these didn't air on regular over the air broadcast with like 26 channel 30 or 47, did they? Uh, no, it was just the home shopping club, which was okay. over the air and, and on cable. Okay. But uh, it was, uh, uh, the breaks were long. Uh, uh -huh. But uh, so we were able to fill them with uh, commercials here at the Ventura TV. Yeah, yeah, pretty amazing. So, uh, um, but you own a station now. Tell us about that low power station that you own. It serves both Chico <clears throat> and and Reading at the same time. Uh, that's right. Uh, I actually have equipment in both markets because they're 71 miles apart. But um, um, way back in, I would say uh, around early 90s. Gary Coca-Cola and I had a bit of a marriage between our uh, companies. I had the production facility, he had the TV station. And I always had interest in being a broadcaster. That started way back in the 20s when uh, in Chico I w went to the FCC. Way back in the 20s? I, uh, <laughs> Wait a minute. Way back in the 60s. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Thank you for catching that. Boy, See, I think I'd say, myself. yeah, wait a minute, you're not that old. <laughs> you're still a young guy. So. But uh, uh, we were trying to get a station started in Chico called Channel 24, and uh, I was instrumental in getting the uh, allocation through FCC. But um, I ended up moving here to, to uh, Fresno instead of uh, pursuing that uh, line of work up there. And I've always been on the production side mostly, and um, Gary Bentley uh, and I decided that uh, we were going to try and get a, a station of our own, so we started that endeavor, mm -hmm. but we ended up with just the production company. And then Gary Cocola, as a mentor, uh, got me into the broadcasting side of things, and this was one of his stations in Chico and Reading. And, um, so he's still mentoring me, and I'm still learning that side. But with Channel 41, I'm doing everything, every department, traffic, engineering. Uh, How do you do it? Uh, do, do, remotely, or do you physically have to go up there? From my home office, um, I um, basically run the station in Chico and Reading through computer as, uh, in each market and with the Internet. And... Uh, thanks to Gary Coca-Cola's uh, master control, they help me with a great deal of uh, uh, ongoings that uh, happen every day with the, with the station. Yeah. You know, they've got about 38 stations they're watching. Yeah, and, and I know that they control here over yes. at uh, Herndon and Palm there. That's right. Yeah. Um, but mm -hmm. so you, they help you control your, your product up there as well? As well. Um, for example, when a new spot comes in from a national account, um, 
master control there will load it into what we call the ad tech systems yeah. in, in Chico and Reading, and then I can then run the stations, add the spots, move things around from my computer. Oh, okay. So according to how you see fit, mm -hmm. or the way it should be. And right. you also work for the Grizzlies, video productions manager there, and you've been doing that for how long? Well, this is going into the 13th season. 13th year. And again, Gary Coca-Cola. Uh, he got a call from the Grizzlies 13 years ago that they needed some help uh, with the uh, operations, handling the video crew. And so he called me and said, are you interested? And I said, well, you know, I'm kind of busy with a production company, but I'll go talk to him. Yeah. And hey, I figured I would help. You know. I want to put up a picture on the screen of you and Billy Crystal. It's a still photo of you and Billy when he shot that <clears> movie <throat> uh, here in Fresno. There you are right there. Talk a little bit about this. Oh, uh, in, what was it, 2011, a movie called Parental Guidance. Uh, Billy mm -hmm. Crystal came in with his uh, film crew. And the guy overseeing his uh, filming actually did uh, Dances with Wolves. And uh, so he had a, a very What's he doing lunch. there in that photo? Are you getting his autograph or what's happening there? What's <laughs> we were doing? talking about if he needed some help with uh, history or any other extra shots around the stadium. He's looking at my business card. Oh, okay. So, oh, okay. So we're did you, to did you have out. quite a conversation with him there, or a little bit? We or? did, yes. And as a matter of fact, you mentioned Bob Hope, and I was, he and I were talking about Bob Hope. Uh, and I mentioned that um, I was concerned that after Ward Grant passed away that uh, I didn't keep close enough contact. And he said, don't worry, it's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> How long did you have a chat there with Billy? How long was it? Just a few minutes, or...? Uh, that was probably just for, uh, yeah, a few minutes because he was getting ready to go into another room and look at the, what they had shot so far. Uh -huh. And I did mention to him when he was looking at the, at the shots that they were gathering, I said, you know, you need to go back on to uh, the Oscars. And he just kind of rolled his eyes like, sure. And, and it turned out that he did go back on the Oscars right after he was doing this movie. Yeah. Yeah. His last appearance there. Yeah. How long was he here? A day or two? Um, I, I think he came in probably a day before I saw him there at the, at the stadium. Uh-huh. Um, but he, he went out and threw the first pitch and that sort of thing, waved at the crowd. And um, it was a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, quite a video production as they were shooting that movie, and I did see the movie, and it was it was quite fascinating right. to see him sitting at the booth at Chick Chansey Park, and mm -hmm. you know, very good. So, um, what's happening with the Grizzlies this year? Can you tell? You know, Chris Cummings is going to be a guest next week. I guess he'll tell us all the insight. But have you heard any scuttlebutt on the inside about what's going on? Uh, no, just the fact that uh, uh, when we went with Houston Astros last year. Um, as an affiliation uh, from the San Francisco Giants, because the, uh, that farm team moved up to Sacramento, um, we are not only division champions, but national champions. Yeah. So we're yeah. working on new promotion to uh, maintain that uh, stature. But still having you know, a lot of financial problems. I guess Chris Cummings is having a lot of financial problems, and we don't know what's going to happen. He's probably looking for investors. At least that's what he told me, and still mm -hmm. looking possibly to sell the team. Um, that doesn't affect the day-to-day -day operations, I, I'm assuming, does it? Not at all, no. We, we all... in all departments we work very hard to uh, just maintain the, the highest caliber that we can we have a good video crew coming in this year and that's the part that I'm scheduling and overseeing um, but uh, uh, Chris you know there's no secret it's been three years he's been trying to sell the team but uh, or find an investor one right, of the exactly. two exactly and and the fact that uh, we're div you know national champions that should make it easy for him yeah and what is your before we go to break what is your day-to-day -day duties as the operations manager? What do you do specifically? Because I know a lot. Of, some of the games are broadcast on cable TV. Is that correct? That's correct. And we also send a signal back to New York through the internet. Okay. And uh, to so Major League Baseball or uh, minor league. Minor league. Uh -huh. Okay. And so they air it back there. Um, I'll get a call from New York when I see two one two on my phone. I realize, uh oh, we got a problem with audio or something. Right. But, uh, but what, what's your job specifically? Well, uh, to keep all the equipment running. 
uh, both audio and video. Okay. And uh, maintain it. And when it's above my head, I bring in my friend Ken Holden, who is a now retired chief engineer at Univision. And together we sit up late at night fixing things. <laughs> <laughs> and then troubleshooting. Uh, oh yes. Troubleshooting. And I making know. sure all that equipment works because a lot of it's getting aged, and so it, yeah. it requires more time, more effort to make it look good. And uh, obviously, um, I've got to keep it running in order to have a full video crew working. I know. And to keep the show running, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gary Hansen is here. He's our guest for the day here on the air off the presses. 436 uh, Me TV Option 11. A lot more to get to here, including a band that he uh, helps schedule and directs. And uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, Thomas Casagrande is our sponsor today on the program. He is the owner of 2020 Optometrics. Back in just a moment. When you're looking for Whirlpool innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. <laughs> TV 26, this is the news at 10 with Andy Asher, Tom Adams, Gary Ratnich on sports, and Greg Elliott with the weather. Supervisor's agenda today, Supervisor Sharon Levy asked for a report on child molestation and the incest problems throughout the county. Marilyn O'Phil to the Commission on the Status of Women commented on what can be done. Newsman Gary Hansen asked her about the awareness of the problem. There's an, a greater awareness needed for uh, the community to recognize these cases, whether it's a teacher or a doctor or a minister or whatever, so that they report, because it's a law that those cases have to be reported. Then the social service agencies can uh, work with the child, can work with the parent, and the district attorney's office can do their job. Do you feel that the DA's office can handle the caseload? Right now, they're... Uh, unable to handle any but the most seriously aggravated cases. They had to request last year, because of the increase in rape cases, they had to request that uh, they be relieved of responsibility for any but the most aggravated uh, child incest and child molestation cases. So those other cases are being handled on a routine basis by people who are not specialists in that field, and therefore uh, there are those people in the community feel that some people are avo uh, avoiding convi conviction and the community is suffering as a result. All right, that was Channel 26. What year was that, Gary? I'm thinking 1980. 1980. Right. So it's like 36 years ago. Mm -hmm. Is that it? That's right. That's and if now you notice, what story that, was that? Do you remember? Uh, that was at the Board of Supervisors. And okay. Something was going on there with uh, where I just pulled that lady aside to ask questions that were uh, uh, pertaining to something that they wanted me to do from the from the news angle. Um, if you notice the quality of those things, it's kind of deteriorated, but that's over the years of dubbing from different formats trying to save them. Yeah. <laughs> and then they, uh, the quality just wasn't there. Yeah. And let me ask you something. I saw something in that news open that mentioned some of the news names, uh, mm -hmm. Gary Radnich being one. Um, right. Gary Radnich, now a sportscaster at Cron in San Francisco, has been there for many years, and he is also the host of... Um, I think the last 20 years on KMDR uh, sports uh, radio uh, from 9 to like noon. So um, Gary and you worked together at KMPH. We did, and I also worked behind the camera. Uh, it was a film camera, as I recall back then, a CP-16. And Greg Elliott, if you remember that name, he was doing weather. Okay. So, um, so many people, actually from 47 as well. Gary Bentley went to uh, Portland, Oregon, as well as Dick Carr, um, anchored in Los Angeles. But they always came back to Fresno. And Gary Radnich did not, though. He, he did He's no. a Bay Area guy now. Right. So uh, he hit it big, and uh, he's making a lot of money over there, Gary Radnich. But he's good. He's good on the air. Uh, mm -hmm. So what kind of a guy was Radnich to work with? <coughs> well, he was just a lot of fun. Uh, he like to uh, uh, joke around a lot and that's why he bring in people like I think uh, one guy was named Crazy George. What about yeah. Vic the Brick? Remember him? 
I don't. Okay, you worked at 26 for a while too. Okay. I didn't know if that was around the same time or not, but uh, but you were there. I was not there in the 80s. I didn't no. come until the late 90s, mm -hmm. so or mid to late 90s at Channel 26. But I want to ask you specifically about a guy named John Wallace mm -hmm. uh, at Channel 47, and um, did he make or break that station? Was it was it John Wallace? John Wallace. Uh, you were his producer for how long? Um, a little over a year. Uh, we shifted that position around a little bit. Uh, um, John Wallace was in radio, and Gary Bentley, who was the news director, brought him out of radio over to the TV station. Okay. And uh, so that's when he put me in charge of uh, producing The Late Show with John. Um, but um, we had so many other things going on that, uh, as I recall, I, it was just about a year that I, I did that. I was so exact with what I was doing that sometimes John would have to complain and say, can I get this script just a little bit earlier? You know? Right, right. Because <laughs> I'd right. wait till the last minute to hand it to him. Right, so. right. But was he, I mean, no, he was a big name, a big personality here in Fresno for many years, also worked at Channel 30 with Nancy Osborne. He left 47 to go to 30. Was he the guy that, that brought in the ratings at that station? Was it John Wallace? Uh, I think it was Gary Bentley at the time, uh, okay. along with uh, uh, Dick Carr. And John Wallace, obviously, after uh, Gary Bentley left the station, John Wallace continued to grow. And, um, and he came back to the station, I don't even remember which year, but um, you said he went to 30. I remember uh, Dan Cullen was at Channel 30, and I brought him over to 47 uh, okay. to do the news. And then... Um, Gary Bentley was in Los Angeles on ABC News, and we called him. Uh, it was at 5 in the morning, and we woke Gary Bentley up. And I said, Dan Cullen's here with me, and, and we want to expand on the news uh, uh, part of the production. Would you be willing to come back and work with us? And Gary Bentley said, sure. Not only did he come back, but he brought a new set from ABC. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then John Wallace went to Channel 30 after that. Right. And... Mm -hmm. uh, so what kind of a guy was Wallace to work with? Great. Professional? Uh, oh, very professional. Always always a great guy. Um, and I understand he's uh, actually doing some of the promotion here for uh, Ventura TV. Is he right? has been in the past yeah. a few years. Yeah, he's been doing some of the, some of the on-air commercials. And uh, John may or may not be watching. Who knows? I don't know. But uh, <clears throat> uh, wish him well if he's out there. Uh, I understand he's having some health issues, but I think he's getting, he's getting past that. He's going to be okay, I think. I certainly hope so. He's a great talent. Yeah, yeah no yeah. question about it. Hey, let's take another break here. Talking with Gary Hansen, 436 Me TV, Option 11, and certainly a lot more history to get to here on the program today. Thomas Casagrande, the sponsor, back in a moment. At 2020 Optometric, your vision is their focus. Whether you're 5 or 65, Dr. Thomas Casagrande will get to know you, your lifestyle, and vision needs to ensure that your contacts or eyeglasses are a perfect fit and the right prescription every time. With the Valley's largest selection of eyewear, 2020 has over 2,000 frames, including top designer brands like Coach, Tiffany, Prada, Ray-Ban, Oakley, and more. Eye exams start as low as $89, so call or stop by to schedule your appointment today. Zodiac Pilot Cut 4, high band color, 230. Hi, stargazers. If you were born between November 21st and December 22nd, your birth sign is Sagittarius. Sagittarius is ruled by the planet Jupiter, which, by the way, is the largest of all our planets, signifying the positive characteristics of growth, gain, expansion, and success. However, two of your negative traits could include greed and over-excessiveness. Two of our famous Hollywood glamour queens born under this sign are Dorothy L'Amour and Jane Fonda. Now for the astrological trends on November 24th for Sagittarius. It's a good idea to recheck that budget and possibly apply a little moderation. If I haven't mentioned your sign yet, hold on, I'll be right back.
And of course, you could tell that Zodiac program uh, shot back in the 70s. Was that on uh, film or no? No, we were using a two-inch tape. Oh yeah, back I then. remember the two-inch tape. Right. There's no question about it. And that was officially called. It was the Zodiac Horoscope Show, which got distributed across the nation. I understand. Right. That show um, right there. Uh, that show, yes. Uh, Gary Including Bentley. Including Canada. That was um, Winners Rosen out of uh, Hollywood was doing the distribution. Now they distribute it across Canada and the nation, but um, it doesn't mean that everybody was buying because uh, they would show it to all the TV stations. Our first market that actually bought the the show uh, was uh, in Sacramento. I okay. believe it was Channel 3 up there. Ch KCRA, my right. old station. Uh, yeah, that's where yeah. I started my television career, no question. And the woman who was actually doing the show, her name was Zandia. 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 Uh -huh. Zondia Zodiac, and <laughs> she was the wife of who? Gary Bentley, the Gary news Bentley. director. All right. So she also did some weather uh, at okay. Channel 47, and we decided in 71, when we started our production company, we decided to do Zondia Zodiac, and because of the restrictions on how you present uh, horoscopes, um, we had to put humor into it, so Gary Bentley and I wrote the script. Yeah, I forgot to check my horoscope today. I'll have to check it later. <laughs> I really don't pay attention to those things. Uh, do you? Well, knowing that we had the right humor into it, I guess, you know. Um, yeah. You know, I, I mean, take it for what it's worth, right? Right. right. Anyway, uh, caller, you're on the line. Uh, go ahead. You're on with Gary Hansen. Yeah, Mr. Hansen, this is Crazy Joe Kazarian. Well, hello. Uh, I, I worked with I worked with you in at Channel Forty One in Visalia, California, K E R O, mm. a long time. Uh, and then I came into Fresno. You probably remember uh, Abe Espinosa. Yes, I, I remember Ike Pappas bringing me into Fresno. Well, Abe is still working as well. You know, he could have retired over twenty years ago, and he's in management at Edwards Theater, still at it. Uh, I'm retired now. I don't do I don't do anything anymore at all. I watch you on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I like connect connect with me. It gives a chance for me to listen to somebody getting good video. <laughs> do you have any questions you, for Gary or no? Do you have any questions? Well, I want to ask him. You know, remember the old beta system that we used to use? If you're talking, when did it change? If you're talking about Betamax, uh, yeah. uh, Betamax yeah. was, uh, it was an excellent system, but uh, they didn't share, Sony didn't share their patents with uh, all the other companies that wanted to be on the market. And that's how VHS right. got the edge. But yeah. Betamax was uh, definitely a, a, a one to deal with until they just lost the edge. Not, a, not enough machines out there. So. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember the cameras? Do you remember the cameras? Oh, sure. Yeah, the Betamax yeah. cameras, yeah. Oh, those old big old heavy cameras. <clears throat> With a big cable that went to the yeah, record They probably deck. sold them here yeah. at Ventura TV. A big TV. old cable, yes. yeah. yeah. And uh, old Dick Carr tripped over those, one of those cables in Visay one time, landed on his nose. <laughs> yeah. So you have a story about and Dick it, Carr, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, Dick Carr just cracked me up most of the time. Of course, yeah. that man smoked like a chimney. And he, I think he died of that. Uh, a little over two years know. ago, we had a moment of silence at the Grizzly Stadium for him. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's gone. He lived in Pismo, and he used to tease me about he got all the fresh air before we did. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you have a good day. It's nice talking to you. Thank you. You got it. Thank you very much. You were also involved in a band. I don't know if you <laughs> still are. Um, and it's, it's um, a country revolution. Are you still involved with that? I'm still involved with playing, yes. Uh, Country Revolution was a band that was around forever, I guess. Uh, when I was with the Jim Lyons show, uh, Country Revolution was uh, under the leadership of um, Gene Staggs, a very good friend of mine. And Gene used to fly with uh, uh, Gary Bentley and me on news stories. What's this here we're looking at? That was shot at the uh, Fresno Zoo. We found an interesting tree out there. Okay, but what is what's the front cover of? What, who are these people? Uh, we have. Uh, is Dom, this the band? In other words, this is the band. Yes. Okay. This is All the right. band that actually backed uh, several stars that came through Jim's place in Clovis. All right. Uh, from Charlie Pride and different other stars that came through. 
All right. And we right. also played with uh, Ronald uh, Reagan's birthday at the Shrine Auditorium. Oh, you did, and yeah. and so this group dates back to when? <clears throat> What's that? When's that photo taken? This was probably seventy. Eight, 77, 78. Wow, that's a, that's a long time ago. Let's uh, take another call here. Good morning, you're on the air with Gary Bentley. Or, gosh, <laughs> Gary. Gary Hansen, Gary Bentley, Gary Hansen. I guess that caller wasn't too, is he still there? No, no, hung up, okay. All right. I guess we hey, answered the questions. We answered the questions, but you, uh, let, let's play just a little video clip from First Night Home Alone. That was Country Revolution back in the, uh, early to mid 70s I guess and, you could say is and 80s that we performed at the Shrine Auditorium all right first night home alone let's take a look at a, a little clip of that it's a you know a uh, an album uh, a actually a band that Gary helped produce some of the songs and he made the bookings as he does today let's take a listen Close down early And through this wet and dust I'll head for home My blood runs cold And then I start to worry For tonight I'll spend my first night home alone talk to There's no one who's waiting patiently at home If I make it home I know what I'll be facing For tonight I'll spend my first night home alone All right, let me hold this up. This is the actual album from back in the 70s and the 80s. And uh, point, okay, which one are you? No, go, come back to me. Come back to me on my camera. Come back to me on my camera. There it is. Point, Gary, where are you? Okay, it would be here. Right there, and you were playing the drums. That's right. Right, you played the drums. That's you did right. not produce this album, but you were part of the album, <clears throat> part of uh, 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 the uh, group there with Bill Bryant, Mark Mosley, uh, Don uh, Bonham uh, and Mark Coleman was playing the piano and Gary Hansen on the drums and so that's the album right there and so um, this was one of what 12 songs on the album that's right yes are you still part of the band uh, not this band no since then I've been in other bands the Dr. Maynard show for example we went overseas and entertained the troops and we're on the ships or by Iran and Iraq and uh, great experiences uh, going through the Philippines, Korea, Guam, mm -hmm. Okinawa. Uh, and we just uh, traveled the, the entire Far East entertaining troops for, uh, like, well, like a USO tour. All right. I want to put up a picture of uh, Jim Lyons. And Jim Lyons has been a uh, guest on this program before. I want to hold this up. This is an album. Look at look at how young Jim Lyons is right there. He's still performing around town, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, he performs over at the Elbow Room and a few other places around town. Uh, we'll get the, the Jim Lyons story from you in just a moment. Uh, caller, go ahead. You're on the air uh, with Gary Hansen. Good, good morning, John. Good morning, Gary. Hi. Boy, talk about a blast in the past. I've heard the country revolution forever. I was a kid. Um, Billy Bryant is still around, is he not, Gary? Uh, yes, actually, I got an email from him last night. Uh, he was just telling me a story about when Country Revolution was playing at Mr. Lucky's in Phoenix, and um, the crowd was kind of standoffish, basically. Really? And, and you know, they, they didn't know who this band was that was playing, and then all of a sudden, when they went into Old Country Love Song, 
they almost got mobbed because it was in that market the song was a number one hit i believe and i'll and, be darned um so he would I, just tell I me that story is, Gary, is there any way you guys could could market the country revolution album on itunes it's possible, I'm sure. Yeah, we could we could work I on mean, that. I mean, because I remember my mom had some of their records, and they were kind of a local band to this area. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. I really, it was really different after, I mean, the lead singer was killed in a car accident. Well, we can, uh, we can certainly work on that idea. I have uh, CDs um, that I've produced just so I, I can save them and yeah. make copies for friends. You know, yeah. And, all right. Yeah. Thank you. All for right. the, thank you very I, much. For I, the, I was just curious because I, I've looked for some of their songs on iTunes, and there's some that are there. I know Tanya Tucker did one they covered, and it's just, but it's not the same sound. Right. So I, I, I appreciate you being on here, and it, it was cool to see that again. Have a great day. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, I want to get back to Country Revolution in just a few <laughs> moments, but back to Jim Lyons for now. And so. This is a record uh, that I'm holding up there that you're looking up on the screen there. Jim Lyons, what year was this? Jim Lyons Live. That was about 1977. Yeah, and you played also, the drums. Th this recording was actually live at Pardini's. Uh, okay. We were performing live on stage. The remote truck was outside and and uh, did the taping as we performed. So, so your relationship with Jim, Jim Lyons was what? Um, I was um, in different times during bookings and so on. I was acting as a business manager as well as uh, he did the same. Were you his and business manager or n no? At Not times, necessarily. Well, it, it turned out that a couple times I booked the band and, and so I handled the contracts and that sort of thing. But um, uh, Jim was the one that controlled the show. Okay. And um, I was his drummer. So. Yeah. So. Um, how would you rate him as a singer? I would say excellent. He, he uh, He's a showman, I, I think, as you know. He, yeah. he is a great showman. Uh, he's performing around town, playing his own keyboards, which shows his versatility. But I think uh, the showman aspect comes in when he uses a band behind him so that he can actually get out and work and the sing, crowd. And actually sing. He has and, a terrific dance. voice. Even today, mm -hmm. I don't know how old he is. I have no idea. This is, I mean, he's pretty, he looks like he's in his 20s here. <laughs> <laughs> He'll like that. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know, but I don't know how old he is now. I mean, how old are we, right? Yeah. Uh, we all <laughs> age, but he still looks great. He sounds great. Um, and like I said, I think... As uh, far as I know, he's he's performing over at the the, the uh, Elbow Room mm -hmm. and in other places around town. Hey, I do want to take a break, but as we go to break, I want you to play a video as we go out into break. And it's from the Country Revolution album. It's called Nightlife. Let's go ahead and play that song going out, and then we'll go into a commercial. Gary Hansen is our guest, 436, Me TV option 11. Thomas Casagrande is our sponsor today. Here is Nightlife from Country Revolution. When the evening sun goes down, you find me hanging around. But it's mine. Many people just like me dreaming of old oh, used to be in the night light. But it's my life Listen to the blues they play
At 2020 Optometric, your vision is their focus. Whether you're 5 or 65, Dr. Thomas Casagrande will get to know you, your lifestyle, and vision needs to ensure that your contacts or eyeglasses are a perfect fit and the right prescription every time. With the Valley's largest selection of eyewear, 2020 has over 2,000 frames, including top designer brands like Coach, Tiffany, Prada, Ray-Ban, Oakley, and more. Eye exams start as low as $89, so call or stop by to schedule your appointment today. When you're looking for Whirlpool innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. Back here on the program, let's take a call real quick and then we'll get into Bob Hope. Caller, you're on the air with Gary Hansen. Yeah, good morning, John and Gary Hansen. Good morning to you, sir. Listen, a couple questions. Did you ever do a Christmas album on the country revolution? That's <laughs> the first question. Yeah. And you, did you know a weatherman named Tom Mall? Hmm. And if you did, he was a good one-liner. And I, I think he had health issues meaning he did pass on, and that I do remember. He worked with KMAK Radio for a little while, if I got that right. Okay. Uh, he was, uh, I thought he was, I, I think if he was living, he would have moved on to higher and better things. Hopefully he's in glory. He, he was a good, yeah. he was a funny guy, nice man. Uh, okay, that's my question. Thank you. I will Thank you. Had, yeah, Tom Mall was... Um, uh, on Channel 47 under Gary Bentley, um, and yes, he did have health issues. I, I wasn't on the news team at that particular time. So you didn't know so him that I well. didn't really know him that well, but I just recall that uh, he was a nice guy. Everybody liked him, and, and they were shocked when he died. See, we talked uh, about the news uh, side of things, and we got hardly any calls, but you bring up Country Revolution, and bang, the phone rings. I know. Popular album, uh, and it brings back a lot of memories with people. There's no question. Let's talk about Bob Hope. Put up a picture of Bob Hope, if you would, please. Ev well, I don't know about the younger generation, but most people of my age, I'd say everybody knows who Bob Hope was at one time. He's passed on now, of course, the Bob Hope Desert Classic and all of his trips overseas to entertain the troops during the holidays. Now, come back to me here on camera. I want to show this book here. And we'll talk about what Gary Hansen had to do with Bob Hope. This is a Bob Hope, uh, I guess you could say it's kind of a magazine. This is an album right here. I want to hold this up, too. That's the album that comes in this box here. It's very old. But I want to show this photo because it shows Bob Hope, Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, and John Wayne. Look at this photo. I don't know how close I can get there, but that's the photo. And I'm trying to get the... Uh, the shiner off it. How about right there? Look at that photo. Four of the all-time, maybe the four greatest entertainers of at least my generation. Uh, it's an amazing photo right there, taken back in 1975. So take us back. What happened? What was your relationship or lack thereof with Bob Hope? <laughs> okay, and and just a quick answer to that caller. Uh, yes, Country Evolution did do a Christmas album. Okay, okay. And um, it was on eight-track tape because we couldn't get the records out in time. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about okay. the one and only. In 1978, a friend of mine um, introduced me to the money people back in Boston who were wanted to do a, a life history, 50 years of Bob Hope's life, and they okay. wanted to put it on records. And so they sent, uh, Glenn Glenn Sound sent reel-to-reel -reel tapes to me and I went to Kenjo Studios and worked with an engineer named Rick Seberg. And we um, rented one of only two devices in the nation that would take the pops and, and certain sounds out of the original recordings. And then we panned back and forth, meaning that we would make stereo out of monaural recordings. Okay. Um, they were impressed by what I did, so I got actually hired into... Uh, a creative consultant for the uh, for the album and we went to Vail Colorado where I met Ward Grant who is Bob Hope's publicity manager okay and uh, the producer he Bernard since has Black. passed on right yes he has uh, unfortunately uh, 
Uh, one little funny story with Ward Grant was that I was in his office there in Hollywood, and um, Neb Beatty, who was an actor, called in because uh, uh, Ward handled his career in some aspects. And I will never forget how he said, tell Ned that I'm here with Gary Hansen. I'll get back to him later. And I thought about that, and I thought, wait a minute. No one knows who I am. You know, that's funny. Who the heck is Gary Hansen? <laughs> right, right. So what happened uh, with Bob Hope? Did you ever I met him. Or no? I, uh, you met him once. I met him uh, once, but... Um, the, what happened to the project, though, that you wanted project, to pursue? The um, project, it, it got done. Uh, the original liner and, and box and so on, my original idea was to put it in the shape of a, uh, of a suitcase because of all the road pictures with Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. But this is the outcome? And this is the outcome because uh, and it's to a save book? money, it, it, right. the book it's instead a of a suitcase. Magazine. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. about 50 pages long, and you've got the album right here. which Several I albums in there, yes. you got several in here. Okay, how in, many? Inside the uh -huh. lid actually would show... Uh, Okay, so you've got, uh, I see, I see, okay. All right, inside of the, I just want to hold the albums up just real quick so you can see right there. They mm -hmm. come in a box here. You've got uh, three albums. Mm -hmm. And so um, did you, you met Bob Hope one, Bob Hope one time. And right. what was the outcome of that meeting? Um, that was just a, a, in Bakersfield at a business conference. Uh, I was supposed to go to he and Dolores' home in Palm Springs. Okay. But uh, the project uh, got bogged down with too many people trying to uh, run the production side of it. And for some reason, my meeting that was a week away got bumped into a different, uh, a different time period, which then never came around. But uh, Bob Hope was aware that I was on the project for some time. Mm -hmm. uh, working with and his what people. did he think of it? Did you have a chance to ask him? Uh, no, I never got that chance. But uh, I, I'm sure he was proud of the fact that uh, all these recordings came out uh, out of his personal vault. I, I might add, you know, so yeah. that they could do um, his life story from all of the greats that he worked with. Yeah. Hang on, caller. Get to you in a moment. I want to show another picture here, just real quick, with Red Skelton. Bob Hope, of course, uh, with Red Skelton, the famous uh, television actor and comedian. He had his own television show, as did Bob Hope at one time. And so there the, the two of them are together, uh, sitting there on the set and uh, kind of yucking it up, my friends. And uh, just a classic magazine. And this was printed back when? What, what was the uh, copyright on this? Uh, I would think 79. 1978 is when we started right. the Bob project. Bob Hope, uh, the yeah. king of comedy, right here. All right, That's let's right. take a caller here. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Yeah, good uh, Good morning. This is Chuck Carson. Hi, Hello, Chuck. Gary. Hi, Chuck. How are you, Chuck? <laughs> good. I just wanted to pass along. First of all, Tom Mall did go over to KFRE Radio. Um, he followed me on the air. Uh, okay. That's what that's what the caller wanted to know. All right. Yeah. Okay. And, and secondly, uh, I don't know if you're aware. John probably is. Uh, I'm touring now with a couple of shows. One is called On the Air, a tribute to Bob Hope, with an actor out of Phoenix right. named Lynn Roberts. And also, uh, we have a brand new show we just started touring with called Red Sails into the Sunset, again with Lynn Roberts as Red Skelton. Oh, I just showed the yeah. photo of Red wow. Skelton and Bob Hope. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good timing, so Chuck. So I just wanted to pass that on. Yeah, i got to have yes. you back on the show at some point here, Chuck. That'd be good. Wonderful. But it's good to see Gary. He looks younger than ever. I know. He looks younger <laughs> now than he does on that front cover of the album, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Amazing what the years can do to you. And who was that young reporter you had on earlier? I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Chuck. I appreciate okay, it. <clears throat> All right, take it easy. I want to roll another piece of videotape. It's called The Joey Bishop Show. It's the open, and we'll talk about what you had to do with that. Go ahead, roll it, and listen to it, and watch it. Sorry. Joey Bishop, we're waiting for Joey Bishop. Late at night, a very special kind of person watches The Joey Bishop Show. Uh, how about you, sir? The vest brings me out at night. <laughs> Tonight from Hollywood.
What do you have to do with Joey Bishop? Well, um, I was working at Channel 12 in Chico at the time, and I had hired Stan Statham, uh, a talent, to come in and do uh, the news anchor. And Stan was also doing promotion for the station, and he asked me if I wanted to be a werewolf. That was me, and the, in there is the werewolf. And Stan would announce each night's guest for the Joy Bishop show, which ironically, my brother was a stage manager on the Joy Bishop show in Hollywood at the time. But uh, uh, so Stan and I worked together uh, on that, and then Stan went on to become our state assemblyman for 18 years in the northern part of California, and then he was president of the California Broadcasters Association for the statewide t TV and radio stations, and he's uh, recently retired now. I see. And Joey Bishop, a longtime comedian, believe that Joey Bishop was a fill-in to Johnny Carson for a while? I believe so. Yeah, yes. for a long-standing, I think, fill-in until, until Joan Rivers took over, and then they had the squabble, and then that was that. I do want to put up this uh, one photo that I found interesting. It's the Channel 47 News Department back in 1970. You were part of that department? That's right. Look at that. Channel 47, KJEO, Television News, and uh, are you pictured there in that photo? Uh, if you look at the left in the back, the blue coat, yeah, that is skinny me. That's you? That's me as one of the reporters. One of the reporters standing next to a photographer, I think, if my eyes that, are not deceiving yes, me. Yes, that's Roy Daly. We had Vern Sellen doing the stock market report. In the center, in front of the car, is Colin Doherty. Oh yeah, Colin Doherty. Sure. And uh, Dick Carr, Gary Bentley, Bob Turcha, Steve Skutsky, and Curtis Cheen. Yeah. Hey, is there any chance that we can go out of this program by running another home shopping uh, with Mark Sharon? We can't? Just, you know, well, we can get out of it early. You know, just get out of it early. Well, while okay. I'm thinking about it, yeah. I want to thank Dr. Costa Grande for the glasses, and I want to thank my wife for doing all the things that she does. Uh, in order for me to do the four businesses that I'm running, uh, You've got four of them now, oh, which yeah. are, okay, we won't run the Mark Sheeran thing, but uh, what, what four are they? Well, I have rentals, where I'm the handyman as well. I have right. a TV station, I have right. the Grizzlies, and I have the music. Yeah, and, so that's uh, four She keeps me running. She's businesses. my nurse and doctor and nutritionist, and, and uh, I have more shoes than I've ever had in my life. You see, every <laughs> behind every successful man... There she is, Nicolina. That's right. There is a woman. Yeah. That's right. Running the show. All right. I thank you very much, Gary Hansen, for sharing some of this history with us. I appreciate it very much, thank and I'll you. see you over at the Grizzlies games. Very good. Uh, you can come up in my office. Uh, right come behind up to home your plate. Office. Yep. Okay. I know. I know. All right. I'll tell Chris Cummings you said hello, and uh, I'll see him next week. He'll be here next Tuesday. We're going to wrap it up for now. We want to thank Gary Hansen for coming on. He'll be back on again at some point. And we'll see you back tomorrow with Sam Shima, gymnastics beat, getting blown out by high-speed rail. Not exactly. He'll have a new location. He'll talk about that. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day. Close down early And through this wet and dust I'll head for home My blood runs cold And then I start to worry For tonight I'll spend my first night home alone Talk to you.